cylinder number seven. Okay. The exhaust valve or the intake valve is now closing on that one. And I'm looking for the exhaust valve to start to open. Start to open. You want to go slow because you don't want to overdo it. You, so I'm looking for this one right here to start going down, which means, or uh, start to rock this way. That way it's telling me the exhaust valve is starting to open. I want to have a flex fan on here, so that's what you're hearing. And my uh, ratchet keeps bumping the power steering pulley. So if you're wondering what all that noise is in the background, And I have all the spark plugs pulled on this engine to make it extremely easy to turn over. There we go, it just started moving. So, do this again. So you're looking for zero lash. This is a stock engine. It's got a few add-ons. But that's okay. The power add-ons I put on here. I haven't put a high, high lift cam in here yet. That's going to come later. Zero lash. And that's, it's nice on this one because the, freaking, the, val, the push rod stopped moving. So it makes it kind of nice. So from that point there, one half turn. Half turn. And now next. Do the same thing again. Exhaust valve's going down. Do it with the intake valve just starts to open. Looking for this one right here to just start to open. So I can adjust the exhaust valve. Just right there. Actually, I probably have to back it up just a little bit. If I can get my hand to the top of the ratchet to click the metal thing over. Right there. Okay, now do the exhaust valve. I don't know if you can see it. I've got permanent marker on the socket there, so I can tell where my half turns at. This guy. Said. And like I said, these are kind of nice because I'm kind of loose. When I get to zero lash, the push rods stops turning. Now I was told that the push rods would still turn. Yeah, if I'm gorilla grip, I might be able to turn it. But as you can see in here, it doesn't turn, and I'm not really worried about it because I'm reaching zero lash, and that's what I'm looking for. And then half a turn, approximately right there. Half a turn, no more. And now those two are adjusted. And that's how you do that. Of course, like I said, there are jam nuts on top of these. There shouldn't be jam nuts on here, but someone put jam nuts on it anyway, and I'm going I'm gonna get, put them right back on due to the fact that this stuff is kind of loose. Or those nuts don't seem to have enough tension on them when I'm tightening them down that you would feel from a standard lock nut on there because they're apparently they're like not swedged but um, they're like nylock nuts and they will seat oh, I had that in there right the first time 
and uh, they won't turn. But being that is not the case here, we want to make sure that we get things tight and won't back off. And that well, and these jam nuts will do the trick. They don't hit the top of the rocker cover, so this is kind of that's nice too. There we go. Just watch me do two of the EOIC method of valve adjustment. And uh, when I get this all done, I'll be back. We'll get her all fired up and see how she runs now, and then do a compression check and see what my compression is. Like I said, I had zero on cylinders one, two, and three. 130 to 135 on most of them, then cylinder eight back in the back was 125, and I'm ex expecting all these to improve after all the valves are done. Okay, be back in a minute. Or probably in about an hour or so. Okay, bye.